again. In this video, we're going to continue with section 8.1. So if you can go to page 3 in your class notes booklet. The first thing we're going to talk about is combining like terms. What are like terms? Like terms have the same variable part raised to the same powers. So what do you get if you have $3 and somebody gives you $4? We know $3 plus $4 is $7. Can you do the same thing if you had $3 and somebody gives you four pencils? No. You would not have $7 pencils. You would have $3 and four pencils. They are not like terms. So likewise, when you have the same variable part, you can simplify. So you can only combine like terms. That's why it's called combining like terms. So this would be 7x. The same thing here. If you notice, with the same powers, x squared y, x squared y has the same variable parts. So 3 of something plus 4 of the same seven something is 7 of that something. But you cannot simplify this. Right? They do not have the same variable parts. This has this extra y. That is only done for addition or subtraction. Multiplication can have different variables. We do it all the time. Say you had four pencils and there were $3 each. You can multiply these and you would spend $12. So for multiplication, you can go ahead and simplify you can go ahead and multiply those. So 3 times 5 is 15, so you'd have 15 of the x. But addition and subtraction, you need to um, make sure they're only like terms. So for part b, you have here an x, a 2x, and a 5x can be simplified. And there's a 1 in this term here, so it would be 1x plus 2x plus 5x, so that would be 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 5 is 8x. And then constants, these are called constants when there's no variable part, you can go ahead and add the 7 plus the 3 minus the 7, which by the way is 10 minus 7, turns out that the 7s cancel and you end up with plus 3. So that would be the answer. Again, I said they had to have the exact same variable part. So on part C here, when they are, have different powers, I mentioned that before, you cannot add these two, but these two look the same. And if you want to um, rewrite it like I did here, or if you just want to do it in your head, that would be fine. It would be 5 minus the 7. Or you can think of that from the last section as 5 plus negative 7. You have to think about it as 5 plus negative 7. I'm going to go ahead and write it. Because if it's plus negative 7, we know for addition, you can move things around. So that would make us a negative 2, y to the fourth. And then this one, you cannot simplify. So that would be the answer to that. And again, if you just want to go straight from here and not show that middle step, that is fine. Example two is an example where multiplication does not need to be like terms. We could take the length times the width. So suppose a rectangle originally has area of 20 square meters. I forgot to read the first line. The area of a rectangle with width w and length a is a equals length times width. This is a good formula to memorize because we're going to be using this formula quite a bit. If the length is tripled and the width is cut in half, how does the area of the new rectangle compare? Let's start with the original. So it said, suppose a rectangle originally has area of 20 square meters, and that's the only information that it gives about the original. So we know that the original area is 20. The original length we'll call L, and the original width we'll call W. So we know that A equals LW, so we get that 20 equals LW. Then I ask, if the length is tripled, so now we're talking about a new area, with the width cut in half. 
So if the length is tripled, the new length would be three times the original. The width cut in half, the new width would be the original divided by two. So how does the area of the new rectangle compare? So what is the new area? So I'm still going to say it's length times width, but it's this new length times this new width. Since these are variables, we can re, and it's all, well, almost all multiplication, isn't it? Um, if you think of this times one half though, 3L, and this is the same thing as times one half, we, it is all multiplication and we can move things around. So what would that be? Let's move it over to the left a little bit. That would be, this would be like saying three over one. So it'd be three over two, multiply the, those fractions, LW. Which, by the way, if you're weak on fractions, I do have a topic video on fractions for you to watch in the topics list. But this would be 3 over 2 times LW. We know that that over here is 20, right? Which is 3 over 2 times 20 over 1. And that would be 60 over 2. Or you can cancel these, whatever way you go, it's 30. I haven't talked about the units. It's in square meters and this is an area. So this would also be in square meters. So it looks like, actually from this formula, it's about three halves or one and one half times uh, larger. That's what the new area would be. So go ahead now and pause and look at exercise three. Pause the video and try which expressions, and these are expressions because they do not have an equal sign, are equivalent. Ready for the answers? Here they are. A and C are both equivalent. The A is equivalent because you cannot add, you, I'm sorry, you can add the W and Z, but they did not. Three plus two is five, and you can reorder addition any which way you want. You cannot add the three and the two for part B. Order of operation says that you need to know what the X is and three and two with another variable is not equivalent. For multiplication, you can, you can multiply non-like terms. So they took the seven and the eight, multiply them. There's one R here, there's two R's here that would make three copies of the R's, R times R times R, and then a Q. And then these are not equivalent because they do not have like terms, so you cannot add them. So now you can try exercise four, pause, and come back for the solution. Are you ready for the solution? Here they are. How'd you do? Well, let's go ahead and try these. So we have 2x plus 5x are like terms, so you can add those, and 1 plus 8 are constants. This one, what I did is I multiplied first and got 2y squared. Then 2y squared minus 5y squared is the same as 2y squared plus negative 5y squared. So that would be negative 3y squared. This one, you can only move around this around if you think of this as a plus negative x. So this would be this term and this term would be 3x squared plus negative 1x squared, which is the 2x squared. And then um, we have the 5x plus 9x is the 14x. In part D, you can combine these two. They have the same variable parts. So negative 1 plus 5 is a 4. Again, when there's nothing in front of there, it's a 1. And then this one, I did show you the work here um, that 
to move these around, I have to think of everything as plus negative. So that would be 7m plus negative 3m plus, and there's a 1 here. So that would be a 7 plus negative 3, or 7 minus 3 of 4, plus 1 is the 5. And then the constants is a 1 plus 5, and this would be a plus negative 4. So that would be 6 plus negative 4, or minus 4, is 2. So now, try exercise 5. Last one on this page. Exercise 5. If x plus y plus z is 25, find the value of this. Now this is, by the way, this right here is an expression, but this right here is an equation. I know that the next section we'll talk about equations, or in a couple of sections, but that is an equation because it has an equal sign. And don't confuse this. You know, I could put equals here, but there's still expressions. I'm simplify the expression, right? We cannot solve this. We'll see this later but you can um, um, still put an equal sign, but you realize you're only working with one side, you're working with the expression. The left side here is an expression, but the whole thing is an equation. Go ahead and try it, pause it. When you're ready, come back. Okay, here is the solution. I think I'll go ahead and do this one in steps, because what I'm gonna do is I wanna move these around. So I went to y plus negative 10. And again, if you see the answer without doing this, this is great. But I'm going to make all my minuses plus a negative, right? Because a minus b is the same as a plus negative b, which is what I was doing above there as well. So now we can move things around. So I can put the x first plus the y plus the z. And I still have a negative 10. I still have an 8, and I still have a negative 5. I'd like to put these in parentheses, and you don't have to, because I don't like the plus and the negative to, to um, touch each other. Okay, so this would be 25, wouldn't it? And then I can just add those all up. Oops, that's not multiplication. So this would be 25 minus 10, or 25 plus negative 10, which is 15. We'll go over here. You can put an equal sign if you want. 15. And then it doesn't really matter because it's all addition of which order you do it. So if you feel like doing this first and doing a 3, if this was um, there was a subtraction here, then you'd either have to change it or um, not move it. Do it left to right. So the answer should be 18. Let's just check that going left to right. 15 plus 8 is 23, minus 5 is 18. If you're wondering where that 25 came from, it came from this. I use this fact that x plus y plus z, and I saw that there, x plus y plus z is 25. So that completes our notebook, our class notes. For section 8.1 and the lecture video. At this time, I would recommend that you now look in the textbook. If you look in the textbook at the examples, you will see that they are very similar to the notebook. And the exercises, the homework that you're going to be doing are very similar to this as well. So you're ready to start your homework. You might want to look at the exercises in the textbook check out the boxes, look at the formulas, and there will be the same boxes and formulas that we have talked about here. I hope that helps. See you next time.